using a multimeter improperly can result in damage to equipment or personal injury. If you are not sure, please seek local guidance before working with a multimeter. In this tutorial, we will be using the Amprobe 210 TRMS multimeter. This video is a supplement to the written instruction, which can be found in online remedy under the tools and tech resources menu. All of the slides shown in this video are from the testing with a multimeter document. Every power related troubleshooting usually starts by verifying that the outlet is supplying appropriate power. To test the AC voltage of the outlet, you can use a multimeter and touch the hot and neutral with your meter probes. You can then use your multimeter to verify the voltage coming through the power cord. Next, we can test the voltage of the power inlet, as well as going into the lower control board. Connect the black probe to the black wire and red probe to white wire. The meter will display the voltage. Now it's time to check the volts going into the lower control board. Remember, DC voltage is found in matrix cardio anywhere past the lower control board. Everything leading up to that point is AC voltage. Checking the power to the console can be done by testing the DC power. At the console end of the data cable, use a multimeter and touch the two outside pins. Pin 1 and pin 8. Your reading should be around 12 volts DC. A simple continuity test can easily help to diagnose a break or short in a cable. Touch both ends of each wire with the probes. The meter will give an audible signal if the wire is unbroken. Twelve volt DC power supplies can also be tested by probing the positive end of the connector with the red lead, and negative end of the connector with the black lead. If you need to test the AC drive motor, disconnect the motor from the control board and test resistance on each of the three motor coils. You should be getting less than 2.5 ohms on any of the three pairs. White and red, white and black, and black and red. A thermal switch on the AC motor can also be tested, but remember, the motor has to cool off before the test. Place both probes on the blue wires on the motor cable. The value should be 0.2 ohms or less. Another type of motor, which is used on the Performance Plus treadmill, is the PMS motor. It can be tested in the same way as the AC induction motor, but coil resistance values should be approximately 0.9 ohms on any of the three pairs of coil wires. To test the elevation motor, we will check the resistance on all three leads of the potentiometer. Brown, orange and blue. Brown and blue wires will give you the total range of the variable resistor, it should be approximately around 10 ohms. If brown and orange is approximately 8.5 ohms, then orange and blue should give you around 1.5 ohms to make a total of 10 ohms. Now, let's take a look at how we can test the generator. The generator you will find in matrix equipment is usually a three-phase generator. Test resistance across pins 1 and 3, 2 and 3, and 1 and 2. The generator tests good when values are equal between any combination of two wires. Next, is a load resistor, found in our ascent trainers, ellipticals, and bikes. Locate the resistor connector by tracing the wires, test resistance across the two wires, should be around 10 ohms. Performance Plus treadmills use a 100 ohm load resistor, which can be measured on the two-pin resistor wire.
and second test for the load resistor includes testing the ohms across the white wires on the 4-pin connector. The value should approximately be 1.25 ohms. Our Climb Mills use eddy current brakes, also known as ECB, which can be tested by checking for approximately 12 to 14 ohms across each of the two coils. Another important component on the climb mill is the DC brake. To test the brake on models CS29, 30, 34 and 35, test resistance on the black and red wires of the brake. A good working brake will show 24.6 ohms, plus minus 10%. If you have climb mill models CS17, 21, 22, 23 or 24, the resistance value on the black and red wire should be close to 37 ohms. To test the battery on any of the machines, set the meter to DC voltage, touch the black probe to the negative terminal, and the red probe to the positive terminal. If the battery is at half the voltage or less, the unit should be plugged into external power source to recharge overnight. How to test emergency stop switch. There are two pairs of wires that plug into the e-stop switch. You can test audible continuity on each of the pairs of the switch. If you need to test the heart rate grips, touch the red probe to the positive terminal of the grip and the black probe to the negative terminal. If the meter displays the voltage between 0.5 and 2 volts DC, the grips are in good working order. Other troubleshooting step to test heart rate board involves checking the continuity of the ground wire. And remember to test the continuity of the wire that goes from the heart rate board to the console.